Hai, Assalamualaikum. My name is Nurna Junida binti Muhammad Kamal. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. My name is Wanu Fatih Zati binti Wan Shufyan. Assalamualaikum. My name is Zaida binti Muhammad Zawari. Assalamualaikum. My name is Nurul Asikin binti Ahmad Sasari. Assalamualaikum. My name is Siti Aminah binti Abdul Hadi. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Nakiba binti Ahmad. Hi, my name is Wan Anissa binti Wan Muhammad Nakha. Hello guys, I am Nur Izzatul Azira binti Ismail. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Luqmanul Hakim bin Muhammad Rozi. And I will be introducing about Mongolia and a bit about its geography. Mongolia is an Asian country and as big as 1.5 million square kilometers. It is a landlocked country located between China and Russia with a population of only 3.2 million people, estimated back in 2020. Yes, uh, Mongolia's uh, territory is almost five times bigger than Malaysia, yet it has 10 times lesser population than our country. This is due to its geographical and climatic extremes. So most of Mongolia's land is unsuitable for growing crops. Though Mongolia has many beautiful landscapes, the country is also known as the land of the blue sky due to their arid climate that doesn't promote the cloud formation and rainy days. That is all from me. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum, my name is Nuna Junida binti Muhammad Kamal and I would like to present a Mongolia race. The country of Mongolia is a country that they have their own land and they also have a culture unique that is influenced by the traditional of the Matic. Although their culture is influenced by Chinese, Indian and also Russian culture, but they still retain it their own identity. Among the ethnic group that inhabit Mongolia are Khazar, Dorvod, Bayat, and many more. The people of Mongolia is also have their own belief and religion, such as a Buddhism, Muslim, Shaman, and also Christian. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. My name is Wanu Fatih Zati binti Wan Shufyan. Tukri is a Mongolian currency. Its name comes from the word coin and round. It came on the market recently. Genghis Khan invented gold and silver coins when first forming the Mongol Empire. The first Mongolia banknotes appeared in 1227. The Mongolia rules in 1253 created the financial authority to produce money circulating in a way that is still in use. But unfortunately, Cultural and economic achievements have been forgotten during the centuries of Qing Dynasty oppression. 
Mongolia's independence after the success of the revolution could begin to create a financial system only in 1921. The dominations of banknotes and less than 100 MNT, which is less than 15 cents ringgit, depicted Sunchi Butter, who was the leader of the popular revolution. The first table shows the conversion of Mongolia to Greek currency to Malaysian ringgit, and second table is show to the exchange rate of the Malaysian ringgit to the Mongolian to Greek. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. My name is Zaida Binti Omar Zawari. Two major festival in Mongolia is Nadam Festival and Saga Ansar. Nadam Festival is the most famous and biggest event in Mongolia. This festival are celebrates on 11 until 13 July. The three days event is celebrate the Mongolian revolution and independence. The meaning of Nadam is festival or feast of sport. Nadam Festival is celebrate with three sport. It is horse racing, archery and wrestling. Women can participate in horse racing and archery but not wrestling. Nadam is not only a festival or holiday for Mongolians, it also can make Mongolians proud with their own traditional and nomadic culture. Next, we go to the Saga Ansar. Saga Ansar is the first celebration of the year or known as Una New Year. The meaning of Saga Ansar is White Moon in Mongolian language. It refers to the first day of the year. Traditional dish in New Year for Mongolians is Bus. Bus is hundred of revelries with meat. Mongolians also will prepare the elegant clothes and their best host to ride them during the festivals. The festival is within 3 to 14 days, depends with their region. When the festivals, Mongolians will gathering with their family at the home of eldest members and share food and beverage while play ancient games and sharing stories. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. My name is Nur Asikin Binti Ahmad Sasari from the slide shows to historical place in Mongolia. First photo is Zaisan Memorial. It's constructed in 1956. The owners allied Mongolian and Soviet soldiers killed in World War II. It also recognized the friendship and achievements that met between the Soviet Union and the Mongol people. The outer wall of the monument is designed on the shape of the traditional Mongolian fireplace symbol, symbolizing life. Within the outer wall of the memorial is a smaller circular prints which contain the earths from the revolutionary battle across Mongolian Altan Bulak, Turbo Lake and Kankingol. If you look closer, you will notice that there is a hole through this base which used to function as an internal flame although now only used on holiday event. Second photo is the Bogad Han Palace. It is one of the most important monuments of the Mongolian history and architecture. It was built between 1860 and 1906 and is composed of two parts. First part is the Summer Palace has seven temples and pagodas. It many vision well preserved Chinese style place of worship. Second part is the Winter Palace. It's a two-story European style building built by Russian architect. For about 20 years, the Winter Palace had been serving as winter resident for the ex-Buddhist leader of Mongolia. This is only remaining palace of four residents where the Bogad Han resided here with his queen for 20 years. The Bogad Han was also known as the Eight Living Buddha. When the Bogad Han died in 1934, the palace was turned into a museum. This palace now displays the collection of personal belongings of the last Han and his wife. Just that for me, thank you. Assalamualaikum, my name is Siti Amina Binti Abdul Hadi. Mongolia's story uh, is extremely very long. The Mongol has a little uh, inclination to live with other uh, nomadic people of uh, North Asia and uh, until the end of the 12th uh, century in 
1189 he was given to a uh, honorary name of uh, Genghis Khan meaning universal king Manchu controlled Mongolia from the years uh, 1691 to uh, 1911 some believe uh, that by the years uh, 1939 uh, 3% uh, of Mongolia population at the time was executed uh, or out of uh, 27,000 uh, 70,000 per the years 1990 the freedom of religion returned seen then a revival of uh, Buddhism and other religion uh, has occurred Mongolia uh, World 1 is independent in uh, 1911 in 1960 a new constitution come into force and Mongolia was uh, admitted to the United uh, Nations in 1961 next about Mongolia meals among the Mongolia mean meal are one uh, number one the creation of the world number two the struggle between good uh, evil number three the animal work or natural phenomena means uh, the most excellent one the creation of the work is accepting uh, will the old building deity at the beginning uh, of time there are uh, was only water and from the sky uh, descendant uh, their holding an iron rule from which is uh, begun to start has uh, begun to start the water the steady uh, birth with a fire which caused a uh, thickening in the milk of the water to from the earth hi guys i'm luri sata azira with ismail will explain to you about the mongolian legends legends of mongolia that is comprises history as well as the great figures of the past or the other theme involving legendary action in contrast to fairy tales and myths. Mongolian history is about young boy called Tava. Tava is a slave that was abandoned when the Black Death descended on Central Asia and began its assault on the people of Mongolia. People thought that Tava had died but the truth is young Tava was recovered from the Black Death and lived on. Even he is blind, but he has the knowledge of all tales. For the rest of his life, Tava would travel to the far corners of the Mongol lands, recounting the wonderful tales and legends to his people and bringing joy and wisdom to the Mongol lands. That's all from me. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Nakiba Binti Ahmad. And now, I will present about the Mongolian language and writing system. In Mongolia, they use the Mongolian language, which is a macro language that consists of widely varying dialects. Mongolian language is a very well known and have the largest members of the group. There are two principal members, which is Mongolian Hao, means Central Mongolian, and Peripheral Mongolian, means Inner Mongolian. The dialects in Mongolian language is still mutual intelligible although there are some phonological and lexical differences. In the Central Mongolian, there are Dariganga, Darhat, Halha, and Songol. While in the Inner Mongolian, there are Chahar, Ejin, Jirim, and Jostu. Next is the Mongolian writing system. Over the last 800 years, Mongolian has been written with a variety of different scripts. The first and the most enduring is the one that the Mongols borrowed from the Uyghurs. The script was adopted from the Sogdians, then the ancient people of Iran borrowed it from Syria. The Mongolian script is written with an alphabetic system which is written vertically from top to bottom and from left to the right. In 1943, the Mongol script was replaced by a slightly modified Cyrillic alphabet and now it is still the most commonly used script in the Republic of Mongolia today. In the Inner Mongolian, under the pressure of the Chinese government, the script was replaced by a writing system that based on the Roman alphabet. 
Hi, my name is Wan Anissa binti Wan Muhammad Nakha. Mongolia traditional clothing. Traditional costume is a deal made from cotton, silk and wool. Men and women still common wear the deal in rural area. In urban area, deal are mostly only worn by elderly people or on festival or sketch news. Other clothing had boot and bell. Hello guys, I am Nur Izzatul Azira binti Ismail. I will present to you about the Mongolian traditional food. So let's start. Do you know that the Mongolian cuisine are much influenced by the continental climate that dominates the region of the Russian and Chinese culture? In Mongolia, meat and dairy are the main ingredient in Mongolian dishes while the use of vegetables are being limited. Most of the meat they use in the dishes are meat of horse, yak, beef, lamb and even camel. The first dish are hot hot of the Mongolian barbecue. The lamb are cooked in a pot over an open fire with carrots, onions and potatoes. The specialty of these dishes is that small stones are placed in the container to fasten the cooking process. It tastes like the smoky flavor of the meat complements with the bland taste of the vegetables. The second dishes are bu dog or a traditional roast goat. Bu dog is a barbecue style in which the whole goat are cooked by having hot stones in, um, slip inside the carcass with the onions and potatoes once the meat has been separated from the skin. It has a very authentic Mongolian dish with meaty aroma and flavor. Besides that, the Mongolian believe that the used stone can boost their health and dry skin if they rub their hands with it. The last one or the third one is hu shu or meat pancake. Similar to the meat pancake in the western countries, Mongolian hu shu has a meatier flavor. Hu shu is the main dish of the Mongolian national holiday which served when Nadam festival took place. For the meat, whether it is a mutton, camel or otherwise, it is ground with onion or garlic packed into a circle dough and cooked in deep fry. The taste of the um, push you depending on the recipe. In a conclusion, Mongolia is a very unique nation because everything about Mongolia and its people are unique, even the cultures and traditions. Mongolia also has a very wonderful history and the country is famously known for its founder and they are bravery back in time. It is also a beautiful place because Mongolia's geographical features is stunningly beautiful and absolute choice as a travel destination. <laughs>